something the oldest established television channel in France, which was privatized in 1987, was happy to do when, with its newfound freedom, it began to fill the screen with a Rabelaisian new version of It's a Knockout. Popular acclaim was immense. C'est une nono historique. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Bad taste or harmless acceptance of the facts of life. Either way, the French seem to believe that it pays to lay say it all hang out. I only half believe it, having grown old and conservative. But even the French, when they grow older, become shockable. The program Sexy Follies, or if you want it in the original language, Sexy Folie, <laughs> concealed its camera in a public park to discover whether the old folk were as tolerant as the youngsters about heavy petting in public. I think the lady on the left has a past of her own, which made her, <laughs> made her a bit more forgiving. What's interesting is that neither of the oldsters flounced off or called the cops. A Belgian program tried a similar stunt, but the Belgians encouraged their potential whoopee makers to interfere not with each other, but with innocent members of the public. <laughs> Either the boys had correctly figured out that the pass wasn't going to lead anywhere, but if they sat still, they would at least get more of it. <laughs> or else they were paralyzed. <laughs> Paralysis is more likely. Men don't know what to do in such a situation, because it never happens to them. Except in France, where it seems to be part of the national curriculum from infant school onwards.
By the time a French schoolgirl grows up, though, she's after much more from a man than his waterman. <laughs> Whatever the other guys had in their pocket, she didn't want it. <laughs> More about connubial pitfalls in part three of this program in our Lift Out Marriage Guidance Supplement. We end part one with the pitfalls of acting in commercials. Remember a year ago we showed you this commercial for floor tiles? Et bien maintenant, Gère Flore fait des dalles. Et en plus, elles sont auto-adhésives. Et hop! <laughs> You'll recall that it was a commercial for floor tiles with the glue already on them. <laughs> Hence the emphasis on adhesiveness. Since making that commercial, the actor concerned has decided to postpone his wedding until, well, indefinitely, really. <laughs> Un présentateur pour sa collection de dalles auto-adhésives. Parce que moi j'en ai plein les pieds de leurs idées. The RSPCA's Animal Rescue Service is under threat. And without your help, this 24 hour, every day of the year service will be reduced to just weekdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> to prevent this, we need $100,000 now. A <laughs> tax deductible donation can help, because accidents do happen. <laughs> Every day of the year. In dog-loving Britain, a commercial like that one would probably be just too much to take. The human audience would all have heart attacks and leave only the dogs watching. <laughs> in Australia, that commercial was intended to raise $100,000 for the RSPCA in three months. Australians are less sentimental than the Brits about dogs. Australians generally consider dogs as useful devices for drawing flies away from humans. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> the target was reached not in three months, but in three weeks. Emotions stirred by lovable animals in commercials can up our appreciation of the product being pushed by several percentage points. Even the Spanish, a people not averse to inflicting slow ritual death on dumb animals, rushed out to buy the TV sets being plugged in this commercial. Mejorando lo presente, le presentamos los nuevos televisores con mando a distancia a su alcance. Sanium Metalli. Memoria electrónica con 16 programas. Sonido de alta fidelidad con dos altavoces. Mejorando lo presente. Nuevos televisores en color sanio. Ducks don't bark, of course. One of the long list of repellent things dogs do that ducks don't. Since I don't like dogs very much in the first place, allow for the wind when I say that this next Dutch commercial would put me off buying the product altogether. In dog food commercials, dogs never smell or have unpleasant habits. And they never die. The famous horse dog food faces the facts of life. It's a helpful booklet, which deals with the offensive things that dogs can do. It is free with three cartons of horse dog food. Oh dear. I've dropped the packet. What a nice booklet. <laughs> he should have hit it with something heavier. He might be back. <laughs> the producers of this next pair of Scandinavian commercials hedge their bets. Not sure whether it's dog lovers like you or dog haters like me who buy most of their breath freshening chewing gum, they made a pitch for each group. <laughs> Dogs, 
<laughs> dogs get eaten in some parts of China, which some of us are ready to admit is pushing a sensible attitude towards dogs a bit too far. Anyway, the Chinese would rather eat chicken. On the surface, life in China is serene, as this documentary enchantingly suggests. This is called kicking the shuttlecock, and it's one of China's popular sports. Keep a shuttlecock in your pocket and you can do a few exercises with it wherever you want. Try it tonight with your shuttlecock. <laughs> Not so delicate, however, is the way the feathers of the shuttlecock are obtained, with children joining in the hunt fresh from the cradle. little boy grew up to be Mao Zedong. <laughs> Mao did such a thorough job of fouling up Chinese agriculture that it finally got to the point where the amount of grain eaten by Chinese sparrows could tip the balance and cause nationwide famine. The sparrows had to be disciplined. In Peking, a special committee was formed with the responsibility of finding a sound Marxist-Leninist method of discouraging them. The city is flooded with sparrows, a million of them, the Peking strategist reasoned. If every sparrow pecks up one grain, that means a million grains. A hundred grains per sparrow a day means a hundred million grains. And there are 365 days in a year. Why, they will eat us out of house and home. How will we feed the people, exterminate all the sparrows? At a signal, all the sparrows in Peking were forced into the air. They were made to fly into death. Not one was allowed to perch until it fell to earth dead from exhaustion. The entire population of Peking was mobilized for this strange battle. the battle was over. The last birdie had been killed. Dozens of trucks carted off mountains of dead birds from Peking streets. What incredible mechanical logic. And that was how Sparrow Pie became China's number one export. <laughs> In capitalist America, they don't fight nature, they exploit it. We asked Mr. Lowell Feimster of Darien, Connecticut to make the Jacobson sheep test. One half of his lawn has been eaten by a sheep. The other half cut with a Jacobson power mower. Is that correct? That is correct. What model did you choose to mow your lawn? I sent over the Jacobson tractor, but it's really for a larger lawn. Besides, it scared the sheep. Well, then, <laughs> which one? Well, uses four-blade rotary chop with the electric key start. Terrific. How long did it take the sheep to eat that half of your lawn? Well, he's still eating. I'd say he's been working on it now for about six weeks. He's neat, but he's not too fast. And how long for the Jacobson mower to cut this half? Twelve minutes. Proof positive that the Jacobson mower is faster than sheep. On the other hand, you can't knit a pullover sweater from a lawnmower. Yes. <laughs> what are your plans for the sheep now that, uh, have you thought of a barbecue? Well, yes, we've thought of that, but, uh, you know, it'll be sort of like eating your gardener. <laughs> Jacobson. Faster than sheep. <laughs>